Okay, well, thank you very much, everyone, for being here. Uh, obviously, I'm Giles, I'm the journalist, I'm wearing a shirt, and this is Michael, the successful entrepreneur in a T-shirt. Um, <laughs> so I like to do a bit of, uh, let's see how many people use Trello, first of all, but unfortunately, it's pretty dark, so we can't see anyone. So hold on, what we're gonna do, since this is a tech one, conference two, and we can solve problems. Three. Okay. Can everyone hold their phone up if they use Trello? Put your screen on and like, hold your phone up so we get an idea. So you, all of you use Trello? Okay, that's good. How many, how many of you use Trello and either pay for it or your company pays for it? <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> we need you. We'll get there. We'll get there. All right. So uh, before we talk about Trello, I kind of want to take it back because obviously you're a, a software uh, developer at heart. And there's an interesting story where you're at university and you wrote this script that uh, tried to tell everyone about what parties were on. It didn't really go so well. You just talk about what happened first. It, you really did your research, didn't you? Yeah, OK. Um, I think when you first learn a program, you're kind of very interested in what you can do. And you think a little bit less about what you should do. Um, I had figured out that the, if you emailed people at the school by their student ID number, which incremented, um, they would get the email. So I basically would start with the first student ID and go from the freshman class and go all the way up to the seniors. And I just wrote a script that looped through and emailed everyone at the school. So I guess that was in 1994. So I uh, spammed my entire college, and the uh, mail server stopped working for half a day. So you broke the universe's entire email yeah. like system. Yeah. Like, I think that's, an, that's interesting as a software developer, because if I'm like the professor of ethics at university, and I can't email my students you know, what's going on in the lectures, I'm going to be like, pretty, pretty pissed. Yeah, I mean, I was like a privileged, stupid kid. Um, and I didn't think about what I was doing. You know, I just thought, oh, I can email the whole school. Why not? Um, I hadn't taken my computer ethics course <laughs> at that point. No, we really did have to take that later. Uh, I don't think it came up in that course, but I do spend a lot of time thinking about that now. Um, you know, you think about technologies like the blockchain, which is like a tool. You could use it for a lot of different things. Um, you know, even all this stuff about social media and all that thing where, hey, in the beginning it was connecting all these people that weren't connected before, and now it's only connecting those people, and they're inside echo chambers. And so there's all these different facets to technology that I think, you know, we spent a lot of time trying to figure out whether we could build things over the last decade, and now we're spending a lot of time trying to figure out should we and how should we. Can you just talk then a little bit about the origin of of Trello uh, before we can come back to the ethics, but talk about where the idea came from and, and when it all kicked off. Yeah, sure. Um, I started a software company back in New, in New York in uh, 2000 with a co-founder of mine, Joel Spolsky. Um, and we made a bunch of different products over the years. Um, we would spend like a week, you know, just playing around with ideas. And one day Joel had an idea. Uh, we were trying to manage a company of about 30 people. I think that's about the size that you get to where a lot of people are doing things. And as a manager, you're not really sure if everyone's doing the same strategic thing and they're moving in the direction. Like you can see, oh, here's what they're checking in. Here's the code they're checking in. But like strategically, what are they thinking about? So Joel's idea was that we would give everyone a to-do list and you'd only get one list and you'd be able to put only five things in the list. So it would be two things you're working on now, two things you're going to work on next, and one thing you're never going to do. So basically, if somebody showed up and asked you, you'd point to that in your list, and you're like, I told you I'm not doing this. Um, and then you imagine a web page where you have all these lists next to each other, and you could look at it. You could just browse through, and you could see, OK, here's what everyone's working on. And if you think about that in your mind, you can kind of start to see Trello in there. Um, it, that's how it came out of that idea. Okay, it was a, it was a, it was a program for developers at the beginning, right? Because you were all developers at the very beginning. I actually, wasn't. I think you know we had built a lot of things for developers over the years, and at that point in time, uh, it was about a year before that we sort of co-created a, a, a website called Stack Overflow, which is a popular question and answer site for developers. When we built Trello, there were a lot of tools out there that did 
um, Kanban and Agile software methodology like targeted at developers. And they're very specific about the way developers worked and had a lot of intricacies around that. And I think what we were trying to do is like take the bones of that and try to figure out how that, how that was useful to a lot of people. Like if you went to offices, you could go to startups and you'd see that have post-it notes all over their wall and they're managing their project with that. And we were kind of like, there's something there, that visual nature, the tangible nature of the post-it note that people really can understand very quickly. And if we could take that and distill it down and just give that to people to build something to manage their projects, it would be universally accepted. Um, and I think that was the difference. To take take the, the sort of idea from a developer tool and make it more horizontal for the rest of the world. I think you saw the same thing with, you know, ICQ and, and, and you know, the, the um, IRC and these tools that were mostly used by developers and then sort of went through this iteration where now everyone's on WhatsApp and... Okay. So basically, the maker of Post-it Notes hates you right now. You've disrupted the Post-it Note market. That's... That's what Trello's done. Yes. Have you stopped using post-it notes in the office, though? Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, I still think there's a, there's, sometimes there's a place for that. I, the, the, the thing that Trello excels at is giving you a map for where you're going and where you've been. So the idea is that this is a shared collaboration space. So it's not just about you, but it's about the other people so that they can see. So everyone's on the same page. Um, you know, I still use post notes if I'm in a call and I have to keep track of stuff. Um, where, did you, where did you understand that this project management tool was more than just something internal? Like, when do you think, oh, this could be something? Yeah, it's, it's interesting you called it a project management tool because I... You don't like that? It's not that I don't like it. I just think that it's an interesting way to describe it because I think if you're technical, and this audience is probably mostly technical, I think when you say those words, it makes you think of a very specific thing. And, you know, the idea behind Trello is that we're trying to make it so simple and sort of the concept there, that sticky note in a list on a board, that's it. If you get those three things, you get what Trello is, that anybody can use it. And they can use it not just for work, but also for things at home or like to plan a wedding. Like no one goes to plan a wedding and says, goes into Google and looks for project management software, right? And, and so that's, I think there's a difference there um, it's hard, though, because then what is Trello? What is the category that it's in? And I think it's a much broader planning category, but uh, it's hard to describe it in terms that, you know, don't fit a preconceived notion. When did you, when did you figure out this tool was going to be something that you could, you could spin out and make much bigger than something just used by your own employees? Well, the, the, the first... Uh, it, you know, it was a kind of a side project. We worked on it for nine months, um, and we decided... We wanted to launch it at a conference because, you know, this was going to be for not developers and the people that we could market to were all developers. So we went to TechCrunch Disrupt, competed in a competition there called Startup Battlefield and uh, lost. Um, we came in second, but the team that came in first doesn't exist anymore, so I feel like we won. Um, <laughs> and at that, that day, 50,000 people signed up for the tool. And um, I think that showed us there was, that had some traction on it. Um, took us a couple of years before we got to that point every day where, where that many people were signing up. But um, in, in 2014, we had so many different things that we wanted to do, and we spun the company out into its own entity and took VC funding. Okay. And I was interested in how it was received when you um, developed this tool in your own company, because I should say at Bloomberg, we started using Trello. And I'm kind of worried about, I think it's great, it's a really good tool, but now I can really micromanage my reporters, which they obviously don't really like. Like, how's, how, did, how did internally, like, the battle of making people see that like, this could be something that could add value rather than something that is going to be micromanaging you? Yeah, I mean, I think... There's subtleties in the way that it works. So we we're talking about project management software before, um, which I think is focused on a very specific way of working. Like you'd have tasks, and they'd be assigned to people. And somebody would be assigned to all the tasks, because you wouldn't want a task to just be dropped on the floor. Those concepts don't really exist that way in Trello, right? Like um, you can put people's faces on cards or not. Like you just put a card up there. Like even the nature of that. The, the individual unit in Trello is a card. 
It's not a task. It could be. That could be what you make your card into for a particular board. But you could also just make a card in the top left corner that's like, hey, here's how you use this board. And it just has a description. So if you think about Excel, like the way that I think the reason why Excel was so successful was that they took this model where you know, they just give you a big grid. You could put whatever you want wherever you want, right? You could just go in this cell and write a comment, or you go in this cell and, you know, put salaries. But if you have a whole roll of sal salaries, you get down to the bottom, you can write a note in there. It's not a typical way that a programmer would think about that. Like a programmer, if just starting from scratch, where they had to design what a spreadsheet is, they would probably come at the problem and be like, okay, tell me what your columns are going to be. Tell me whether they're going to be numbers or money or dates, and then... You know, it's a very structured way of thinking about it, but that's a database. It's totally different than what Excel is. And, and that sort of flexible nature of Excel made it useful in so many different ways. And I think that's you know, part of what we were trying to do with Trello, which was give people just enough structure so that they can collaborate openly. Um, and then they can all be on the same page and sort of take away the anxiety of not knowing what's going on. Where did you come up with the, the name? And I'm always interested in this question because yeah. when startups, if you did a pie chart of like how startups like think they spend their time, obviously a lot of it is getting their product ready, and they hope that the very small sliver is how much time they waste trying to choose a name. But actually, in reality, people spend a lot of time over this. Like, how did you do it? There, it's an interesting story there because like we we had to we, internally we had a code name for it, um, and it was based on the sort of visual like lists, you know, the way that looked, but also the fact that Trello was like a little bit of structure. We called it trellis, which is obviously like a structure for plants to grow on. Um, and we got to the point where we were going to go to TechCrunch and we had a deadline for submission and uh, we needed a domain. And all the domains were taken, like trellis.com was taken, trell.is, like every sort of different, you know, way of slicing and dicing that word was taken. And uh, so we decided to, hey, we only got a couple hours. We really need a name. We got down to the wire. We got everyone into the kitchen. And we sort of crowdsourced the name. Like, hey, throw up your name ideas. We'll write them on the board. Um, and <laughs> the name that we came up with, we were big into mascots. Like Trello has a, a husky named Taco. That's the mascot for the app. At the time, it actually was a manatee. I was really pushing this cute manatee as the mascot for Trello. It didn't really take. People were not into it. Um, and so the name we came up with, and everyone voted, and this was the name that we were going to name Trello, was Planity, which is a combination between planning and manatee. It's also a terrible name. It's awful, awful name. And I, I just shook my head coming out of that meeting, and my co-founder, Joel, is like, I, I don't know what you want me to do. The deadline, we only have a couple minutes, you know, like... He's like, go find me a better name. You have a half an hour. And I sat down at my desk and just started typing names into an instant domain searching tool, and nothing was coming up. I went around and around and finally just typed Trellis again. It was all, they were all taken. But an ad came up on the side for Trello.com, and I was like, shit, that's it. Um, so that's where the name came from. Is there a certain thing that you think is the most responsible thing for your growth? I mean, it's very much word of mouth, and that's how people seem to pick up on it. But is there something else you think that's a real catalyst to, yeah, to get I, you where you are? I think there's two things. So I think that the, the simplicity of what's going on, the sort of the metaphor is very approachable to people. So the post-it notes, like if you get post-it notes and you put them on a wall, like you'll get Trello in a minute. So the vocabulary to understand what Trello is is very small. Um, and in a collaboration app that's super important because you're working with a bunch of people and it's not going to work if they don't use it. The second thing I think is that, you know, for a long time, going back to the can you build things, I think the, the technology that we use to build software today is getting much more approachable to many more people and it's just quicker to build things. So like actually building features is just the entrance fee. Right? Like you have to be able to create the feature, but that's not what's going to make your product stand out. The thing that makes the product stand out is much more about the emotional connection that people have to the software. And what I mean by that is, um, you know, like what's their connection to the brand? How do they feel that when they're using the software? I think if you think about little features in Trello, like the fact that you can change the board background to some background that has meaning to you personally, 
And then when you add images to cards, you see the little image on the front. So when you show up at a board, your first impression is like a visual imagery of things that are important to you. You see this with emoji reactions, the custom, uploading custom emoji reactions that are inside jokes, you know. And I think sort of enabling that personalization actually builds empathy amongst the people that are using the software, so the team that's using it. And um, I think that's a really big part of unleashing the potential of all those teams. Okay. So you, the, you sold the company at the beginning of this year to Atlassian for 428 million. I mean, that's obviously a very easy to understand marker of success. But how about in two or three or four years' time, where there's, what are those markers that you lay down where you think if I haven't got there, I'm going to be gutted? Yeah, so I think um, go, you go back to TechCrunch. When we got on stage, my co-founder said, you know, we're going to build a tool that 100 million people use. And I think that was a ridiculous number. I laughed when he said it. I couldn't fathom it. And I think what's behind that number really was this idea that we wanted to build something that was very horizontal, that connected people, collaborate, you know, let them work distributed, right? Like not all in the same place, but let them be in different places and collaborate at the same time. And um, when you're building a tool, like, like we've translated into 21 languages. Um, it's, a, you know, basically available in over 100 countries, those languages. And you know, when you're building a tool for the whole world, that 100 million number starts to make sense. Like that's the sort of scale that you need to approach. We've had 25 million people sign up for Trello already. Um, so it's still, there's still a lot of work to do, but I think that's the direction we're headed. That's the sort of marker of success, I think, is you know, can we be the next Excel, what Excel did for spreadsheets, can we do that for planning? And you're launching, are you launching a, obviously, because everyone uses uh, Slack and also Trello, they're two very, not similar, but compatible uh, platforms. Are those areas, is something you want to compete with them more and push into more? You know, as part of being part of Atlassian as a whole, like we build a lot of teams for, where we build a lot of tools for collaboration. So we have, um, you know, tools that deal with documents, tools that deal with communication, like chat tools. There's vertical tools that sort of target tech teams in the way that they work. Um, and then there's Trello, which is, you know, a very horizontal tool that can be used by any team. So for right now, my focus is really making Trello more awesome. Okay. And I'll let the rest of the company focus on, yeah. on those sorts of pieces. And I think, you know, you mentioned Slack, um, which is widely used, very popular communication tool. And I think the analogy I tell people when they get it, it was funny, they were doing the, the little back and forth before we got on stage. I, I tell people, like, if you're out in the woods and you're doing search and rescue, you need to have your radio, right, to communicate back to base. But even with your radio, you could be in the woods and be lost. Um, the other th tool that you need is, is your map or your GPS. It's like, where have we been? Where are we going? Uh, and you have those two things together, and they work really well. Um, and I think you know, the, the, the communication tools are very focused on the ephemeral now. They're focused on the present, which is very useful. It's like, a f you know, like we need to communicate now. Trello is sort of focused on the other ends, which is like, what happened before, and what are we going to do next? Mm -hmm. So where are we in this sort of journey that we're taking? And this journey, how many users have you got now? How close are you to? I, the the number that we talk about is 25 million signups. Um, so. OK. Um, we're running out of time. But kind of just lastly, if, with the benefit of hindsight and also the fact that you're a founder of a software driven by company, like, what would you do to make the industry and the companies more diverse? Because developing is not a very like, Diverse industry. Let's be honest. Yeah. Other things that you could do as a, a founder, looking back, yeah. and you think, what hire, should I do? Hire remotely. Like okay. number one, I think that people need to get in when it's possible. I think that the, you know, two thirds of our company works remotely, and the that sort of opened up this huge talent pool for us that was so much more diverse. But not just, you know, not just on gender or racial lines, but also just geographies and cultures and, and languages. Um, and for us, that was really important because we were building a tool that was supposed to be universal, right? So the people that made up the team that built the tool, I needed to create a team like that. Otherwise, um, you know, it was, we'd, we'd build something a little bit more myopic. But um, that would be my advice. I think that the collaboration tools are getting 
really amazing at connecting people that are not in the same place at the same time. And I think that can have a big impact on the way that you f staff your company and, and hire employees. Ten times as many people will respond to a job posting if you open it up to remote work. So if you're having trouble hiring developers and, you put, and you're open to experiment with that, and we just released a, a PDF the other day on like best practices for remote work. And so it's something that I'm evangelizing and talking about a lot. Okay, interesting. Okay, well, thank you very much. You're on our time. So, obviously, a round Thanks, of applause Charles. to Michael. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you.